What's up guys, John from ARTV. It's time for another throwback review. Highly requested one, possibly because it's called Infinity on High. Get it? Fall Out Boy album. 2007 is when it was originally released, and I've gotten a ton of requests for it over the years, and I definitely want to dive into it because there's a lot of killer tracks on this LP. If you'd like to help the videos keep flowing right here on this channel, make sure you click the top link in the description down below to donate. That will take you over to my channel. There's a little thing in the top right corner you can click support and help through there. Fall Out Boy returned with a slightly more adventurous sound with this album in 2007. I can't say that I necessarily expected it, but at the time I didn't really think that much of it either. I had only heard from Under the Cork Tree at that point. Obviously, huge fan of that record. If you would like to see my review of it, the link is down below. That album sold over 2 million copies in the U.S. alone, and they were riding off of the success of that and probably had a lot of weight on their shoulders, and I think that that came out lyrically for Pete Wentz whenever he was pinning this album's lyrics. The album kicks off with a small little feature from rapper Jay-Z. That track is called Thriller, features some of the heaviest guitars that you're going to hear on this entire record. I really love the lyrics and that transition into the classic song, The Takeover, The Breaks Over. I think Pete Wentz was still at the top of his lyrical game whenever he was pinning this record. Like I said, I feel like they were influenced by their rise to fame here on this record, and I think obviously Patrick Stump did have a little bit to do with the lyrics, but at the time he was mainly just kind of the voice of the band, the singer of the band, and not really the front man. That was back when Pete Wentz was still just totally in control. The reason I wanted to praise Wentz's lyrics is because he still felt semi-quirky on a lot of these songs. Of course, well-thought-out verses, and then of course the really ear-grabbing choruses that are really hooky and memorable. I feel like that's all you could ask for really from any songwriter, and I definitely wanted to point that out. While also one of the best songs lyrically, I definitely have to point out my love for the track You're Crashing, But You're No Wave. It's one of my all-time favorites from this band, and it's kind of set up like a court case that plays out in under four minutes, and it's absolutely wonderful. Patrick Stump's vocals sound stronger than they ever have on this LP, highlighted on songs like Fame is worse than infamy, and of course, I've got all this ringing in my ears and none on my fingers. The latter of those really, really closing out this record and closing up shop quite nicely. The guitars are really prevalent and are still really a major component, probably the most important component to the musicality of this record, with Joe Troman showing off on tracks like I'm Like a Lawyer and of course, The Carpal Tunnel of Love. That track, in particular, has stood out to me and stood the test of time. It was initially one that I felt a little bit conflicted on. I mean, I was probably, what, 15 when Infinity on High came out. I remember buying it for the first time. I was at the mall and I begged my mom to get it because I can't remember what store it was. It irks me, but I cannot remember what store I was at. They were offering it for like $7.99 or something whenever you bought something else in the store. And she did it and I was so excited and I ended up selling my copy of it. And then I finally got another CD copy recently. That was a little bit of a rabbit trail there, sorry. Carpal Tunnel is the song that I usually pick as my favorite song from this LP. Of course, like I mentioned, kind of a rough start with it, but then through the years, probably even a year later, a year after its release is when I really, really started to love it. I love Pete's screamed vocals on this one. It just feels very enticing, very passionate. Patrick sounds extremely confident and strong on this song in particular. I felt like it was probably his best performance of the entire album. The guitars from Joe Troman are also really memorable, and of course Andy Hurley is killing it on the drums in the background on this one. It's definitely a little bit more of a harder leaning track, while still pop punk at heart. Obviously there's some killer pop leaning singles on this thing. This ain't a scene, it's an arms race, thanks for the memories, and the takeover, the breaks over, all being rather large successes for this band. This ain't a scene has a super slick guitar and bass combo flowing all throughout pumping in this sense of confidence and even traces of sarcasm, I feel like, as Andy Hurley kind of adds in those pounding drum beats in the background. This track caught fire and nearly topped the Billboard Hot 100, falling only one spot short. I know another song that had that same problem falling one spot short. Any, any guesses? Here's a hint, it's my favorite song of all time. This track is relatable for all the outcasts, for all the girls whose lips couldn't move fast enough. Well, you get the point. There's a nice slower paced song on this album called Golden that I feel like often gets overlooked whenever people discuss this record, and I can't help but wonder why. It might be a bit more mellow, but of course it's still pretty powerful and very much emotive. I suppose the same could be said for a lot of deep cuts on a lot of different albums, but 
I still can't help but point them out. Another one of those, besides the fantastic ones that I've already mentioned, is the ever-catchy Hum Hallelujah and the equally catchy and explosive rocker Bang the Doldrums. I've really bonded with that track over the years. Patrick sings on this one best friends, ex-friends to the end, seeming a little bit bitter after basically being thrown into the friend zone after a breakup. One song that I'm not particularly fond of is the track The after life of the party. Its intro kind of gets on my nerves, it kind of clashes with the rest of the track, although I do have to praise the writing throughout the chorus and some of the other verses. I like kind of the darkness of the song and really the brooding feel that does feel different and I like the effort, it's just that I feel like it could have been executed a little bit better. I also can't skip out on mentioning the peppy, don't you know who I think I am, which should win all of the awards. There should be some sort of award for all of the great song titles here on this LP. I love the upbeat chorus, which almost sharply contrasts the darker verses, which feature kind of a snarky bass line before breaking back into that guitar and drum fest that it features during its chorus. I believe that this is the last truly impressive record that Fall Out Boy released and probably will ever release at this point. Sure, Save Rock and Roll had its moments. They've got a few hot all pop singles out there right now from their forthcoming record, American Beauty, American Psycho. But even those best moments from those records and those singles don't even come close to touching the greatness of their first three records, and this one in particular. Infinity on High is a 4.5 out of 5. Woo! Shots fired! Shots fired on that new Fallout Boy material, I know, but, uh, spoiler alert, it's just not that great compared to the old stuff. That's just my opinion, though. Let me know your thoughts on this album, Infinity on High, and, of course, Fallout Boy in general, in the comments section down below. Hit the like button on this video, and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my future album reviews, and, of course, I've got a couple of lists still on the way, like the best and worst things of 2014. It'll be on here, and, of course, on my side channel beyond ARTV. All the links for everything you could possibly want to find are in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you very soon right here on ARTV.